people can help me with my computer. Oh. A technician will be with you in four hours. Four hours? You can upgrade for just $5,000. What? The Universal Serial Config Board should be set to ID6. I need mean that in plain English. Help. Leo LaPorte to call for help. May I help you? Welcome, welcome, good to see you. This is Call for Help, and I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm a lot of breath because Gabe and I have been running all over the studio. He's trying to catch me. You can't catch me, Gabe. You can't catch me. I'm running, I'm running away, I'm running away. See, that's it, that's it. He's a, good, he's a good camera operator, isn't he? This is, the show. <laughs> this is the show where you answer your computer questions. We have a little bit of fun uh, while we're doing it. And the whole idea is to make this stuff accessible palatable, you know, so you don't go, oh, this is boring. And mainly, so you go away from this show an hour from now saying, wow, I, I know some stuff. I know, I understand a little bit better how this works. And maybe even, gosh, I just thought of something great I could do with my computer that's really going to help me. Because I, you know, I know how frustrating the personal confuser is. I mean, this, this thing was almost designed to make people nuts. But if you master it, or even if you get a little bit better at it, it can change your life. So that's what we do here. Now, you are an integral part of this show. I mean, we wouldn't be getting up at 7 o'clock every evening. I mean, I'd still be in bed. If we weren't, if we didn't want to do this show live so that you can call in and participate, toll free, 888-989-7879. That's the number. Uh, okay, maybe I got up, but I, I'm still wearing jammies from the waist down. You can also uh, email me, callforhelp at zdtv.com, and we check the mail throughout the day. I'm checking it right now. It's downloading right now. And uh, if, you, if, you get, if you email me before the show's over, I'll get it. And a lot of times at the end of the show, we, we find email in here that's just really wonderful. It helps us, uh, gives us better answers, corrects, things like that. So I, I, I value this so much, so please do never hesitate to send some email along. We can't answer each, each one individually. There's, there's thousands a day, but we can at least uh, read them, and I do appreciate it. And a fun way to participate, and people are doing it right now, is in our chat room. Look, Paul looks just like Stacy, doesn't he? I love that. <laughs> looks just like Paul. That's a great haircut. And Rocky looks just like me, and Harvey looks like, well, could it be Satan? Join us in the chat room, www.zdtv.com slash call for help. I'm in there right now. Whoop, I clicked on the wrong button. I look like me. <laughs> That's cool. Where'd I go? There I am, with blue hair. Chat room is available if you click the interact button on our web page. Now today on Call for Help, occasionally I wonder, I ponder, could I use my teapot to brew some coffee? Meanwhile, others more usefully muse about whether they can use their scanner to photocopy documents. Much more to the point. We'll show you how to transform your scanner into a multitasking machine so you don't have to shell out cash for a photocopier. And maybe we'll brew some coffee in our teapots. Plus, personal digital assistants, PDAs, things like this. These are so great. This is Anthony's. And what a wonderful, wonderful thing this is. Oh, Anthony's writing a little, uh, I think I crashed it. But anyway, uh, oh my goodness. PDAs are populating the world like cell phones, but once you've invested in a handheld computer, how do you make the most of it? We're going to show you some terrific business applications that will keep your PDA and you looking sharp. Okay, some great stuff you can download and install on Palms and Windows CE devices. But first, let's get to our first call of the day. It's on the ZDTV NetCam Network from Brooklyn, New York. It's Jack. Hi, Jack. Hey, Leo. What's up? Hey, how you doing? I'm good. What's the S for on your cap there? Uh, Syracuse University. All right. Are you a student at Syracuse? Uh, that's where I hope to be going next year. Good for you. That's where uh, Syracuse is a wonderful school, great basketball power, and, of course, many of my friends who are broadcasters now started uh, their broadcast careers at Syracuse. Yeah, one of my friends is going to major in journalism, but I'm going to major in computer science. So. All right. What can I do for you? Uh, I wanted to know, uh, is there any converter that I can use to convert an internal CD-ROM drive into an external one. Oh, sure. Oh, sure there is. But if it's an IDE drive, it's not going to be easy. Mm. Is it an IDE drive or a SCSI drive? Yeah, well, it is an IDE drive. It's a CDRW drive. Right. Well, here's the thing. The only difference between an internal drive and an external drive is mm -hmm. an internal drive 
I mean, an external drive is an internal drive put in a case with its own power supply, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you can go to the, if you have any good computer kind of components or parts store in your neighborhood, you can't go, probably not go to uh, like Computer City or CompUSA. You'd probably have to go to somewhere where they cater to geekier people like you and me. Mm -hmm. You can buy, or you can do it online. You could buy an external case for your drive. It'll have a power supply that'll plug into the back of the drive, and you can mount the drive right in there. I mean, truthfully, do you have uh, do we have that uh, smart and friendly external? Because if I hold that up, you'll see immediately it's really the same as an internal. The problem is the interface. See, that's why I asked you if it's SCSI or IDE. Those are two very common ways of hooking up CD recorders to the computer. SCSI, it would be great because all you'd have to do then is get a SCSI external device that would hook up to the back of the drive, and then you'd have a SCSI port on the back that you could connect to a SCSI card. Because all SCSI cards have an external port for external devices. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, I searched for some IDE converters, and uh, I know I've seen them before in magazines, but I haven't seen them around for yeah. a while. I don't think so. I yeah. Don't... And I looked on, uh, you know, places like eBay and stuff like that. I couldn't find one I at all. I don't think they make them anymore. I know what you're talking about. They had external SCSI cages, I mean, uh, IDE cages that you could add more drives. This is, this is an example of this smart and friendly drive is the same as if you, if you put a computer around this, it would look the same, wouldn't it? You can yeah. even see where it's been mounted. And all this case is is a, a place to put the power supply. They have a little fan, the power supply. And but see, this is SCSI. It has those external SCSI connectors, and that's the key. So what you would have to do, and you could do it, you could do it, is get kind of a case with an open back. Okay, you want the power supply and everything, but you want an open back. What you would do is you trail the ribbon connector, your IDE ribbon connector, out the back of your computer. You know, it's flat, so it wouldn't have to have a big gap or anything. Yeah. And plug it into there. I know a lot of people, I've seen gone on over many people's houses, where they actually have a bare IDE drive sitting on top of the computer. Yeah, and well, that's what I'm doing now. So. You're doing that? Well, you're one of those geeks then, aren't yes. you? Yes. But it isn't a good way to do it, is it? Because you really want to have an external power supply. You don't want to get dust and stuff into the insides of your computer. It'd just be better to have everything sealed up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know of. Let me, let me take a look, or maybe if somebody's watching knows, can email us if they make these external boxes for IDE. And I guess you'd need an IDE card with a connector on the back of it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe some of these. Go to, have you looked at the Promise website? Promise Technologies, they make external IDE cards. They might make one with a connector on the back of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thanks. Hey, uh, Leo. Yes, sir. Uh, is there any way I can send you a question about Linux to an email? Yes, just send it to, well, let's see, because, you know, as, as you just heard, I get so many emails, I'm going to, to answer a question individually like that, it's going to, it's, you're going to have to get it through to me, aren't you? Try Leo at ZDTV.com or call for help at ZDTV.com and just, just put your name in there and say, hey, Leo, it's me, and I'll try to answer it for you. All right? Okay, thanks a lot, Leo. But, uh, yeah, you're welcome. And I'm going to do that because you're a nice guy, but uh, folks, I, I wish I could answer everybody's individual question. I get so many of them. And I, try, I do answer a few, but I just, there's no way I could get to them all. And I apologize. It, it, it breaks my heart. I wish I could. But I hope you understand. It's just not possible. All right, it's time, put this down here, for our AOL tip of the week. Let's do it, shall we? Let me see. Let me start AOL and see if I've got any mail. Welcome. Yes. You've got mail. I've got mail. We're going to show you how to delete the custom items from your toolbar today. You have items on your AOL toolbar right at the top here that make it very easy to navigate. Maybe you didn't know, certainly if you didn't read the manual, what manual, right? You wouldn't know that not all of these are permanent. Everything from people on over is permanent. Everything on this side of people can be changed. And it, the way that right now you're saying, but there's no room, Leah. Well, all you got to do is right click. And see, remove from toolbar. There go quotes. Yeah, yeah, I want to delete it. Right click, remove from toolbar. There go perks. Yeah, yeah. Calendar, right click, remove from toolbar. Now, you can't do that with anything else. Notice I'm right clicking on these, nothing happens. You can only remove this purple custom area. Next time, I'm going to show you how to add icons. Yeah, we're going to keep you in suspense. Or maybe between, that would be an exercise left for you. You can figure that out before we come back uh, next time, next week. That's our AOL tip, how to remove those icons from up there. Look, they just disappeared. <laughs> up next, so you think you're a pretty sharp flash in that PDA around at meetings? Hi, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. But are you using it to play solitaire or actually doing something useful with it? I would do that. We'll show you how to harness your handheld for some serious data management and have some fun at the same time when Call for Help continues.
Bop boobity doo but welcome to our weekly small office home office feature, better known as Small Office Home Office, or SOHO for short. Personal Information Management Software, PIMS, and Personal Digital Assistance, PDAs, are a match made in heaven for hardworking entrepreneurs. The ability to integrate data from your desktop PC with a handheld device means you can get your own work done anytime, anywhere. And here to show us a few of the best titles available for Palm and Windows CE devices is the author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to the Palm Pilot and Palm 3. And our download guru from the ZDNet Software Library, Preston Grala. Good to see you again, Preston. Hey, good to see you too, Leo. Welcome back. Thanks. You know, not only do you run uh, the ZDNet Software Library, but you kind of have taken over the pilot section, yes. haven't you? Yes, you, exactly. You, yes. You're Mr. Pilot. Mr. Pilot, yeah. I live for the little PDA. You, now, you <laughs> actually use one, right? I use one all the time, okay. as a matter of fact. Right. As a matter of fact, I use one. Have? I even have a Palm Center here. here. Oh, he's got, he's I, got I, it on. I actually have one here. And um, you also have an array of them here as well. What I use my Palm 7 for? is cellular connections to the internet and email, which right. is uh, very, very cool. Right. Expensive. Yes, You wouldn't expensive. want to do a lot of that. No, 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 you wouldn't. But uh, if you need to get email on the run, you need to get uh, fast stock quotes, great for that stuff. I'll give you an example. Friends of mine bought giant season tickets, and they're, they're selling off some of those tickets, right? And they gave me a thing, and I was driving down the road, and I said, wait a minute, I don't want to miss that date. And I, I had my Palm 7, and before I got to work, I was able to email and reserve those seats. There you go. Can be important. <laughs> yes. Of course, <laughs> there may be more important things for Soho's like <laughs> in touch of clients and things. Let's talk about, I, mean, I use the word PIMS. What, what, what is a PIM? Well, like you said, it's a personal information manager, and think of it as your personal secretary. And for a small office person who usually can't afford a personal secretary, right. it's something who will keep track of all your contacts, your to-do lists, right. your deadlines, in fact, your entire life, all your contacts, everything you can imagine. Well, I think of it almost as a kind of a breakaway part of your PC. You can enter in all your agenda on the PC, all your contacts. You put this in here, copies it over there, you take this on the road, and you've got everything. That's yeah. right, absolutely. Now we're going to take a look at a kind of enhanced version of the Palm Datebook that you like a lot called Datebook yes. 3. Yes, Datebook 3. This is downloadable. You can download it and install it. What's really nice about this, how it enhances the Datebook, is that you can add little graphics if you want, so oh, it's really? easier to scan things. You can even add a little daily journal. It does really nice nice links to your to-do list as well, which is a little harder to do than the Palm. Um, for most people, uh, the Datebook is the most used portion of the Palm, and so this is a great addition to it. Well, I, I actually really like like this. Do you have any pictures in here? Uh, I don't think we put any. We have fixed Preston's computer. Is the yes. <laughs> That's a daily task, I think. <laughs> That's kind of neat. So is this free or is this shareware? Uh, this is shareware, so download it, try it out, and then if you like it, pay the author. Well, I think I do like it. It's, it's, you know, there, it comes, Palm comes with a very good datebook application. Yes. This seems like it just adds a few nice yeah. features that are would be handy. I'm going to try this Absolutely. one Absolutely. All right, let's move on. What else do you have for us? That's Datebook 3. Datebook 3, yes. Yes, absolutely. All right. And, um, well, for the Palm 7, which I showed you before, there's yeah. something called Thin Air Mail, right, which allows you, here. That, that allows you to, um, I don't know if we have that running here now, actually, that's to check news, but Thin Air Mail, what that does is that allows you to check your email anytime you want. Um, your normal POP3 email it lets you do, and that's, that's um, extremely Yeah, well, that's useful. important, because when you're using the Palm 7's built-in email, it's not your normal email, it's right. your palm.net address only. Right. Exactly. So this allows you to get your own regular email. Wow, that's very cool. And you yes. have multiple accounts. Now, that could be a lot of data. Well, what's nice about this program is what it does is it hits the server. It just downloads the headers of all your messages. So all you need to do is oh, take a look yeah. at the header. Oh, I like this one. Let me read it. And not only that, you can then only download a portion of the message as well. So it's uh, very efficient. You don't have to spend gobs of money, which the Palm 7 usually eats up when right. you're doing a cellular connection. And very important, if you're waiting for an important email you just don't want to miss, you can yes. check to see if that email's come in without downloading all your right. email. That's Absolutely. Great. All right. Thin Air, and that's for Palm 7 only? Is there a version yes. for the regular Palm? No, Palm 7 only. What's nice about it is it's free. Oh, it is? Yes, this one's free. Oh, I'm going to download that yes, one. Yes, you that's should. Great. This is a great one. How can they give that away? Don't um, Advertisements? Uh, or? Uh, you know, it's the Internet, right? Everything's free. Everybody makes a billion dollars. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Oh, let's talk about Windows CE devices. Yes. This is a Cassiopeia, which is uh, from Casio, one of a whole number of devices that are designed with the Windows CE operating system in it, which is just kind of a stripped-down version of Windows. Right. And it has all the same kinds of things as right. a pilot does. What, what applications do you like in Well, it's here? nice here is a pocket map. 
So you can actually have maps. You're in a strange city, uh, let's say like San Francisco, which certainly is a strange city, as you know, from living here. <laughs> it's very and, uh, strange. We've got Chicago in you here. You've got not Chicago, quite not strange. quite as strange, but there's water there, too. So yeah. um, what's nice about that is you can get an overview like that. You can zoom in on any intersection. You can get driving directions. You um, can even enter an address in here, and it'll find it for you, which is amazing. Yes, it, it, it's really great for any traveler who is in a strange city and is getting lost. What's nice is since it's color, um, the color really helps in maps, I find, yeah. dramatically. So it's, it's really good for this. Is there anything like this on the Palm? Um, there, is some, there is some mapping. The problem is the Palm, as well, they just announced some color. So right. there's the no gray, color right, maps. The gray scale is a very good job. Yes, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to see. I've that. used this on the bigger CE devices, but it actually works pretty well even on a yeah. Palm, palm size device. That's the Cassiopeia. Uh, is that the E100? I think that I think is, that is yes. which is nice. Now, we're going to move on to something a little larger. CE devices come in three flavors, small, medium, and large. This is the medium, and this is the... <laughs> I'm sure there's some way to get this off here, but I'll just forego that for the time being. This is the Jornada 690. It's a handheld. I guess if I push that button. There we go. Okay. Now, show me what I can do with this that's different. Well, there's something called HPC Notes on this thing. And, okay. Um, and one of the nice things about all these organizers is the way... I don't know how I'm going to find way... this. How do I get to HPC Notes? Let's see here. I never use... Well, let's close oh. this. I don't have a stylus. Here, it looks like your... there we are. Oh, that's it. There we are. Well, that was easy. <laughs> yes, you see, just press a button and it comes and right what up. What is this now? This is different from the standard memo pad? Yes, exactly. What's really nice about this is that it allows you to filter your notes. It allows you to organize your notes. You can search through them easily. For a lot of people, keeping notes on the fly is what these organizers are all about, and this does a really nice job of that. I see somebody's going to the Bahamas on our staff. <laughs> <laughs> How much is that? Uh, that is Shareware. Also, download Shareware. for free. And I, can't I think remember. $35 yeah, on that. On the, on the ZDNet software library right. site. This is a great site, by the way. Now, you have a Palm site, but is there a CE site that's uh, analogous to your Palm yes, site? Yes, we have a CE download site as well, okay. so all the software you showed off here is downloadable from the Palm site and the CE site. Wonderful. Yeah, I could see how this really makes a difference in keeping a, a, a business uh, a business uh, person, especially a small business person who, as you said, doesn't have a secretary, doesn't have a lot of assistance right. uh, wired. What do, you, what do you think overall the impact of this uh, mobile revolution is going to be socially? I mean... Well, I think this this is the key right here, this yeah. little antenna. Even more than the information is the instant access to the Internet instantaneously, yeah. wherever you are. And uh, there's both good and bad to that. The good is that, like you said, you could check your email wherever you are. Um, you're never away from work, which for a small <laughs> business <the> person, <laughs> right, that's the good and the bad, which right. is what I was about to say. Small business people are never away from the right. work. It's their business. That's right. right. But on the other hand, you know, it's 3 o'clock in the morning, you pick up your little cellular uh, PDA yeah, and you fast. check your email. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could be a bad thing. So I guess just flip down the antenna when you get home and... <laughs> and play backgammon or something. Yeah. Preston, always great. You do a great job on the ZDNet software library site. And, of course, this new book, I can't wait to read it. This is uh, this is the uh, Preston's book, The uh, I Complete Idiot's Guide to Palm Palm 3. And, by the way, Preston's written a wonderful article for us on the top 10 PDA business downloads, 10 of them. We only showed a few here. It's on our website at zdtv.com slash call for help. More call for help, more of your questions, more of my answers coming up. Stay right here. Good.
Ladies and gentlemen, for your delectation, the free file of the day every day, a free program you can download and enjoy. It's selected for us from the folks at the ZDNet Software Library, Preston and Company. This is the Psychic 8-Ball. It's a free, remember the Magic 8-Ball toy where you would click on it and it, we would ask it questions? Here's the Psychic 8-Ball. Let's see. We'll call for help. Suffer any computer crashes today. Let me see. Uh, I did think of a question. All right. Uh, I'm sorry. I have to grab and shake it. We'll call for help. Have any crashes today? Don't bet on it. All right. We love it. Now, there's only one thing I want to mention. Yeah, it's free, but there's one problem. When you do the Magic 8-Ball, it changes your home page. Oh, it fixed it. I guess it doesn't change it. It just for one, it just at one t point moves your browser. Oh, good. All right. I'll, 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 I'll retract that. The first time you run it, your browser pops up with their home page. But it didn't change the home page, and we like that about certain programs. We don't like it about other programs. Hope you got that. It's our free file of the day. Get there by going here, zdtv.com slash call for help and clicking the free file of the day. Let's uh, say hi to the chatters in the call for help chat. See what they're saying about today's show online. And they're talking about, as we were just a minute ago, PDAs. By the way, you may notice that my striped shirt was not in evidence in that last segment. That's because because of President's schedule, we had it taped a couple of days ago for air today. He couldn't be with us today. He was just flying around and stuff. So uh, that's why my clothes are different flying around just like that if you want to fly to our wait a minute that's not the chat room if you want to fly to our chat room www.zdtv.com slash call for help is the place click on interact and we'll see you in there meanwhile on the ZDTV netcam and network we've got Derek from Chenequa, Wisconsin. Is that how you say it, Derek? It's Chenequa. Chenequa. Hello, Derek. How you doing, Leo? I'm great. How are you? Oh, excellent. Did you survive excellent. the winter? Uh, yeah, actually, it's, uh, it's been pretty warm lately, but uh, we did have a really cold winter for yeah. a while. So I hear. Well, I hope it stays warm. I hope spring is actually here. That would be nice. What That'd be I... nice. Hey, listen, we yeah. just bought a uh, Hughes Network Direct PC satellite for our internet connection. Yes. And I was wondering if we should have the same concerns about security that cable and DSL users mm. have. Excellent question. And we've talked about the security because with, uh, with DSL and cable modems, you have a, generally have a static IP address and you're on full time. And those both kind of are bad news in terms of being more prone to get hacked. Now, I should say right away, anytime you're on the net, you're on a network. What does that mean? Somebody can get to your computer just as you can get to other computers out there. So even a dial-up modem isn't completely safe. Interestingly enough, you may be the safest of all because of the way Direct, T, uh, Direct PC works. Let me show you, this is the graphic that Direct PC has on their site of how they work. And you already know this, but I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna telling you anything you don't already know, except I might tell you one thing that you don't know. This is, this is you, Derek, right here, client computer, and the internet is here. But the way that your traffic gets to and from the Internet is kind of odd because you still have a modem, right? Right. And you have to dial out. You go to the Internet service provider through the Internet, and then they request the data, which is set up to the DirectPC satellite from the DirectPC network operations center. So you contact the operations center. They request the data from the Internet. The website sends, there's this kind of funny loop here where the website sends the data, and then it goes up to the satellite and comes back down to you. The fast part of the link is this part here. That's 400 kilobits per second. The slow part is 56K going out this way. Right. But who cares because mostly it's download speed you care about, not upload speed, right? It's been real fast, too. Yeah, it's, it is very nice. Now... Are you safe? Well, yeah, you are, because you've got kind of a non-standard connection to the Internet, because there's no incoming packets on your modem line. All your incoming packets are coming from up there, and they're highly encrypted. Direct, if you look at the uh, FAQ on the Direct PC site, they're using a digital encryption standard, DES, to protect the data as it goes from their system to yours. So you are probably in the most secure environment you could be. There's no way that anybody can see the data going into your system. No way, okay? Because it's not only, sure, you could say, well, they could set up a satellite and they're going to see, but it's encrypted. And there is, it would be very difficult for them to see the outgoing data because they would have to tap into this system and there's no public access from the Internet to your system. That's a phone call direct from you to the Direct PC Network Operations Center. So they would actually have to physically tap a line 
to get your data. So you are perhaps in the most secure possible system. Doesn't mean you shouldn't worry about hackers, but you probably don't need a firewall. Okay. okay. Uh, in fact, I would say you absolutely don't need a firewall. Direct PC is protecting you in that regard. So, you know, that's one of the side effects. We haven't, you know, really, uh, I like Direct PC. The, 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 the only negative I know about, and you can tell me, is this, uh, the, the fair access rules where if you download too much, they start to, to uh, slow you down. I haven't had any problem with slowdowns. Usually we run at about uh, 70 to 80 for streaming video. That's I see great. it peak to 146, and we haven't had any problems. And you haven't, and, and it hasn't been, you know, slow. See, what happens is after, uh, no, they want to say how much that data is, but after a certain point, they say, hey, he's a hog, and they cut, cut you up. Apparently, you're not a hog. You're a good <laughs> user. So, so that's the only negative, and, of course, having to have that separate phone line. But, boy, you get the positive. And when you're out in the middle of nowhere where you can't get DSRL cable, this is the only high-speed access you have, isn't it? Right, absolutely, yeah. and it, it's worked really well for Well, it. I'm glad. That's great. A good good testimony for Direct PC, and I thank you for the call. I uh, love your show, Leo. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Have a great night. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. And I hope your mind is put at rest. There, this is, uh, you know, as far as I can tell, having looked at this, this is the most uh, secure system I've ever seen, really. Uh, a short of a virtual private network or something like that. We're going to take a break, but I want you to test your technology in our daily quiz. And something I just said will help you. Go to the website, click on today's quiz, get this right. You're in the drawing for one month. I'm sorry, one year of online learning at SmartPlanet.com. And the question of the day: What is DES? Yes, data encryption standard, digital effects system, a desktop accessory, or this instrument? What is DES? What is DES? Get to the website, and you tell us, you little man, and we will talk to you right after this, and Call for Help continues. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. And we've, uh, Lock icon and net uh, navigator. Media post that oh, great. Oh, that's great. That's great. Sorry. Well, the reason uh, I recommended uh, the email is because of the real, uh, real video, which makes it really easy for everybody. It says, and, uh, and just the low price. Uploading good. wants to change that picture. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. My okay. pleasure, yeah. Uh, Erica, Gabe says hi. Dave says hi. They're all just going hi. No, no, don't button that. Oh, Erica. Dang, they heard you guys were looking and. Stuff. Yeah, I think. I don't hear anything right now. You don't hear anything? That's a good thing, Erica. That's a very good thing that you didn't hear what I was talking about earlier because you would have been very upset. I hear the Vorak. You're hearing Dvorak? No, well, that's probably better to hear Dvorak than what I was just saying. Talk to the hand, Leo. Talk to the hand. That's a, that's a, that's a three, Leo. I'm hearing someone tell Leo to talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. That's not Leo. That's me. That's me. Can you hear me now? Ken. Yeah. I'm Leo Laporte. This is the show where we answer your computer questions. We explain how technology works. We put your mind at ease sometimes, and sometimes we might raise your awareness. I hope not your anxiety level. If you enjoy the show and you've come up with a question watching it, I'd love to hear from you. Now, we've told you a variety of ways you can get a hold of us. But one way I didn't mention is video email. If you have one of these, and boy, we're really encouraging everybody to, to get one of these because it's so great to see your face. You've seen a couple of calls we've had. To be able to talk to somebody face-to-face -face is wonderful. But if maybe you're a little shy or you're worried about getting on the air live, you can send us a video email. Record it and send it to us at cfhvmail 
at ZDTV.com. You know who's just here visiting the studio, and I should have put them on, is the folks from Chili Soft. They're from uh, Australia, and they make one of the email packages I really like a lot. I've recommended before, uh, which is Video Mail. So use Video Mail or whatever package you choose and email it to us. And uh, we would love to put you on camera. And, of course, you can always get in the chat room. You don't have to be shy about that. It's the friendliest bunch of people since Cheers. You know, you walk in there, they know your name. Of course, that's because it's right below your avatar. But www.zdtv.com slash call for help and click on interact. There you go. Leo, hey! Now's the time on the... <laughs> Not exactly like that. Now's the time on the show we'd like to check in with our friends in the ZDTV newsroom, see what's going on in the world around us. Ladies and gentlemen, Erica Hill. Hi, Erica. Well, hello there. What a lovely introduction. Oh, well, I just <laughs> thought I'd spiff up the place a little bit, I just as you spiff up the place a little bit. Oh, oh Leo. Oh. You're too kind. Oh, no. I, you know, uh, I should never, we never talked about this, but you had big shoes to fill. Everybody loved Alice Kedja, but I get lots of wonderful mail saying, you know, it... If, if Alice had to leave, Erica's a wonderful replacement. Well, I'm glad. Yeah, Thanks. they really like Thanks it. Thanks all the call for help viewers out there. Yeah, they like So what can, what can we talk about today? Oh, Leo, it seems the only thing we're talking about today is Palm. And I know you've been talking a lot about handheld devices today yeah. on the show. Yes. You've got one for us? I do. All right. Today we're going to talk about Palm Computing. Tomorrow the company is set to go public. They just priced their IPO at $38 a share. Now, that's above the revised range, which was double what they were thinking of asking in the beginning. And while Wall Street is pretty excited for the IPO, there are still a few hurdles that they need to overcome first. The Palm. It's synonymous with handhelds everywhere, and that's causing some trouble for Palm computing, including several lawsuits. The latest charges Palm with patent infringement. EPASS, a developer of smart car technology, filed suit in New York on Monday, alleging Palm devices infringe on the company's 1994 patent for a credit card size computer to store personal information. The charges aren't new to Palm. In 1997, Xerox filed suit against U.S. Robotics, which 3Com later acquired, claiming Palm devices infringed on a Xerox patent for handwriting recognition technology. And last December, Telzon and Penrite alleged parts of the Palm operating system were copied from their software. Both suits are pending, but will they affect Palm Computing's Thursday debut on the street? There's going to be a lot of legal issues surrounding the Palm product now and for years to come. Um, my feeling is these aren't going to be a major drag on the stock, at least in the short term. So Palm can get over the legal woes. What about the competition? Its main rivals include Scion, Casio, and Handspring. It's the last one causing the most stir. Handspring launched its handheld, the Visor, last year, based on the Palm OS. The competitors, including Handspring, um, do present formidable competition. These are the people that develop the Palm products, now developing a competing prob uh, product. I think the biggest problem, the biggest challenge for Palm really is the inconsistency of its management. It's had a lot of turnover and upper management over the last few years. They really need to nail that down. One thing the company has nailed is demand. Despite the lawsuits and the rivals, Palm has a hold on the U.S. market. And DataQuest predicts the demand for handholds will only grow, expected to reach 35.2 million units in 2003, up from just 8.2 million in 98. One of the reasons Thursday's IPO is expected to be so hot. Put aside the profits, people, not just analysts and investors, know Palm. This product is something physical the consumer can see. It's not an intangible idea such as biotech or something like that. It's something they can see and use and like and buy. And therefore, the, the retail demand for this IPO is going to be enormous. You know, Leo, demand for 3Com, Palm's parent company, has also been enormous the past few days. Shares are up more than 70% in this past week. And, of course, we'll be following Palm's progress here in the newsroom when it begins trading. Wow, it's really interesting they're going for 38 bucks. You know, I got to think that that's a, a little late on it. You know, if you had, if, if Palm is on the peak right now, and I have to think that there's going to be a lot of competition, a lot of other devices, if you'd got, you know, it's too bad they weren't public four years ago because that's when it was on the way up. I wonder if it's still going And if we could up. have only gotten in on it four years ago. Yes, well, you couldn't then. I don't think, I, I mean, I'm not allowed, and I should say this, and I think it's really important, neither of us no. can buy technology stock, and that's a good thing mm -hmm. because then we can report on this stuff without having invested interest. But even if I could, I'm not sure I would buy it at 38 bucks. No. Do you use a Palm, Leo? Yeah. Yeah, I use a Palm 7, but I have to say, my eyes and mouth are watering for this new uh, Cassiopeia uh, E100. I'm starting to like the new CE devices. It's really wow. good looking. It's color. I like the color thing. Yeah. It's All fun. right. Well, 
We'll talk some more later. That sounds good. Okay, bye. Bye, Leo. Erica <laughs> <laughs> Hill in the newsroom. If you want more uh, on this story, and I'm sure we'll be talking about the big IPO tomorrow, tune in those ZNN reports that are on throughout the day on ZDTV or on the website at ZDTV. See, Z wouldn't work. I wonder what they call us in Australia. ZDTV.com. Get ready. Time for the Mac World Mac Tip of the Day. Today's tip to where do you turn when an Apple manual is your need. Here from Mac World Magazine, fellas, all Jeffy Mills said, Hell, Jeff, Jeff. You notice I, uh, because you're a writer, I, uh, I, I didn't leave the preposition at the end. I said, to where do you turn? We turn to. Yes. Uh, the Apple website. No, this, this is no, this is great. Yes, it's a complete redesign of the Apple website ever since the uh, the launch of the new iMac. Right. TVs, those new. This machines. is the the i website. Right. Right. New now, do they always have a manuals online like this? Uh, they've had for some time, but they're kind of buried. Yeah, because I wish every company would do this. Now, these are the Apple manuals for every computer or for what? Uh, for every computer, this, there may be a few missing. They do uh, have them for the power computing series, which wow. they... Drop down the titles just so we can see the, the variety. Oh, I, This is a search. I uh, see, uh, I see. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, uh, just to but show you... Let's say the QuickTime. So, we're looking for the QuickTime manual. Yeah. Now, what form is the manual in when you get they're it? They're all PDFs. PDF is that Acrobat, you need Acrobat Reader to look at. Correct. Right? That's the postscript descriptive, uh, page description uh, uh, format thing in the bottom. Exactly. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> That's very cool. But and if you've acquired some old Mac software right. uh, or hardware on eBay or something. Everybody should do this nowadays with people with you know almost universal access to the net. Who wants to keep manuals, right? If they're online, you can always get the latest and download it. And even stuff for old stuff. Look at that. And it, and it looks beautiful. Great tip. Where is that? How do I find it? Uh, you go to the main Apple page, mm -hmm. and uh, should be right under the support tab. Go to support. Or you could do a search on manuals. That should turn it up. Love also. that. What a great idea. Thank you, Apple. Once again, you're showing, leading the way. And thank you, Jeff, for showing us where Certainly. it is. Coming up next, do you find yourself lying awake at night brooding over the difference between a megabit and a megabyte? Megabit. It's... It's time to unburden yourself with your most pressing computer question. You give me a call, disclose your RAM or ROM ruminations, and achieve some balance in your computing life. A call for help continues. There she is, my friend, the beautiful girl for help website. I just love her. Every day I visit to check out the latest stuff that you see on the show and stuff you don't see on the show. We have uh, we have all sorts of wonderful things in here. What should I, Jerry? Give me a give me a little direction. Where what are we? Should we take a look at Soho? We've got this whole thing we do every single, as you just saw, every single Wednesday. It's our small office, home office segment. And whether it's the one you just saw or ones from weeks gone by, we've got so much great content here. If you're a small office or a home office, or if perhaps 
you would, uh, you know, like to start a business of your own, www.zdtv.com slash and you will be there. <laughs> you know, I don't want to scare Justin. Maybe I better take this off. Justin's on the line from Three Rivers, Michigan. Hello, Justin. Hello. How are you? Um, I had a question about um, uh, what is the cheapest and fastest Internet service. Oh, that's a great question. Well, cheapest, I can tell you right now, there's a lot of free services. I mean, that's very cheap, right? You can't get cheaper than free unless they start paying you. Um, Alta Vista does it. Excite does it. There's a company called Net Zero. Lycos just announced they're going to do this. All of these work pretty much the same way. You sign up. You will download a, a, a little um, program that will be running on your screen all the time showing you ads. That's how they pay for it, right? But you get free Internet access. Now, let me just show you. Totally free Internet access from Lycos. This is just the newest one. They just announced this one. Now, I don't have experience with Lycos. I don't have experience with Excite or Alta Vista. The only one I've tried and can recommend wholeheartedly is NetZero.com. Oops, I just mistyped that. Let me stop. Whenever you mistype on the net, press stop because you don't know what you'll get. <laughs> Sometimes they hijack. This is, they call themselves, and I love this slogan, the defenders of the free world. Uh, and basically what happens is you'll sign up with them. What you want to find out first is if they have a local phone number for you, okay? Okay. So uh, Three Rivers, you know, I, you know, I don't know where that is. So what you want to do is you want to go there and... Um, I'm going to agree to the terms and services here. I accept. And they do have somewhere here, <laughs> the, they've really changed the graphics on this site. It's really wonderful. I'll, I'll, let me sign up. I want my member IB to be Louis Laporte. I'm the first of my breed, okay? And, uh, oh, nobody's, nobody's chosen Louis, and I'll choose a password, and I'll go through the sign up. They're going to ask for some information. Okay? They're going to say if you're under 18. Are you under 18, Justin? Yes. But you have to have parental permission. Makes sense, right? And uh, you'll go through the whole thing. They, w they do, because they take a lot of information, that's why they want parental permission, because they're going to ask things like what magazines you read, how much money you make, stuff like that. Okay. Read the privacy statement. If you're under 18, anybody should do this, but especially if you're under 18, make sure that they're not selling your information or using it in some other way. They are trustee certified, so you know that the privacy statement is true. Basically, they say, and I think this is true of all of them, we don't sell your information individually. What we do is we sell it in aggregate. We say 53% of the people who are our subscribers make over 50000 a year, for instance. And then they are able to sell ads based on that kind of general statistical information. Plus, they use the information to target ads. You say in there, I'm interested in pets, you'll get more pet food ads, right? So that's fine. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, and it's not personal. But you should know that's why it's free, the advertising, the demographic information you give them. Of all of them, uh, like I said, I haven't tried them all, but I hear the best things about Net Zero. You wouldn't want it for Internet gaming. Are you thinking about that, Justin? Um, no, not really. I'm not much of a game person. I like to voice chat a lot. Okay, this should be fine for that. Voice chat, uh, email, and browsing, you should be fine. Give it a try. It's free. Okay? Thanks, Justin. I appreciate the call. Mom and dad will like it that you're not spending, saving, you're saving them 20 bucks a month. But do ask them before you sign up for anything like that. We're going to take a break, but I want you to test your technology in our daily quiz. Here's how this works. You know the answer? You go to the website. You click on today's quiz. You get it right. One year. You're going to put you in the drawing for one year, a whole year, 365 days, 12 months, 83,974 minutes of online learning at smartplanet.com. The quiz question of the day, what's this? What is this? Data encryption standard, digital effects system, desktop accessory, or this in German? Come on. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Get to the website. Give us the answer. We'll talk about this in just a little bit.
Welcome back to Call for Help. Before the break, we said, what is this? And maybe a few of you were tricked by that very clever this in German. But the truth is, it's a, a data encryption standard. It is a National Institute of Safety and Standard Technology Standard Secret Key Cryptography Method. It's not the best in the world. It's only 56 bit. Uh, but it's there. It's, uh, and, and it's, uh, for a lot of people, it's adequate. It would, let's put it this way. You could crack it, but you'd have to put a lot of computer power behind the attempt to crack it. It's very good for something like direct PC because the data is flowing by, and you'd really have to want it badly to crack it. So DES is a, is a good, not great, encryption standard. Brian sent us an email the other day from McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey. He said, I was wondering if you might be able to suggest a good program for using a scanner as a copier to copy documents straight to the printer. Interesting question. Now, normally, if you want to scan and print, you would scan a, an image to a, a graphics program. You don't have to save it to your hard drive, but scan it into the graphics program and then print from that. That's not a big pain, but it would be nice to be able to do a copy machine kind of thing. And in many, uh, my old HP scanner came with a, a pro program just to do that, you know, a big button that said, <laughs> scan the printer, and you'd press it, and that's it. Um, so we looked, and we said, is there something like that? And in fact, yes, there is. It's free. This was one of the free files of the day. Uh, this is called Photocopier, okay? And you couldn't get much simpler than this. Here's how it works. You only have a few choices. Copy in black and white, copy in grayscale, copy in color. You can either make it 100% or 70%. You can set the darkness and lightness, but there's only four or five steps here, so you can't, don't have a whole lot of control. The main thing that makes it useful is, and this is something that you, would be a little more difficult to do with a, you can make, you can say, I want 700 copies here, right? Actually, you can only go up to 99. But I'm going to make one copy. You press the button, and that's it. Goes out, looks for the scanner, finds the scanner, and scans an image. So I put a, a little image in here. Uh, there it goes. It's going to scan it. Uh, that uh, a viewer gave us when we were, I, gee, I don't remember where, where we were when we got this. But anyway, it's, it's, it's for last month. It's a little Valentine calendar here. I don't think it was Detroit because that was, well, it could be. And so it's scanned now, and now here it's printing out to our printer. See, there was no point where it was saved on the computer locally. Let me just show you. We, we don't have time for the full printout, but you can see it's printing. But here it is. This is the original that I scanned. I wish I could remember who that was. I'm terrible. But isn't that cute? That's our February calendar. It's not Emily, I don't think. It looks like Emily. And there we scan it. Now we scan it on blue paper so it wouldn't blind the camera. But, it, but you can see it does a pretty nice job. And that was just, you know, boom. That's 70% reduction. 100% would fill the page. It would make it the same size. Okay, I just wanted to save some ink. So I hope that'll work for you. It's available from the ZDNet software library at www.hotfiles.com. It's called Photocopier. Comes to, uh, to us from Nico Cuppin at Nico2000.com, and he's actually written some other software, too, that you might want to take a look at. But, Nico, thanks for making that one free. I think that's a very nice thing to do. That's, uh, that's the answer. I hope that helps your question, uh, and thanks for calling, or emailing, I guess. We're going to check the mailbox for more email questions and comments when Call for Help continues. I it's a nice picture. Who is, I wish I could remember who that is. Isn't she cute with a little puppy dog? I think we had her on.
Leah Laporte here. Let's check in with the chatters, see what they're uh, talking about in today's show. And uh, they seem to be talking about, what are they talking about? I get to, I got, it's talking about connecting uh, to satellite TV and, oh, I get it, the, where you get the printer, copy your fax all in one. That's called a, we call, we call that internally a hybrid. Nobody else in the world knows what we're talking about when we say that. I think Patrick Norton coined that phrase. I'm not a big fan of those all-in-one multifunction devices because one of them goes out and you're kind of out of luck. And each of the individual functions is usually not best of class. Um, and since you already have a fax sender and receive built into your modem, uh, if you have a scanner and a good printer, you, you pretty much got everything you need. I'm not sure I'd recommend a hydra except for maybe a small office home office. Hey, join us in the chat room, though. I mean, that's one of the things we talk about. And, you know, there's room for debate in all these subjects. www.zdtv.com slash call for help. Click on interact to get in there. Now, let's take a look at some of the email. We've got a lot of email. Here's a good one from John. I want to want to read this and address some of his uh, points. He says, shame on you, Leo. You left so much out in that direct PC segment. You gave people a false sense of security. He says the link from the Uplink Center, that's the Network Information Center, uh, Operations Center at uh, DirecTV, to the website and back is not encrypted. That's right, which is very much like anybody else who's surfing, unless, of course, you have an encrypted uh, connection for your bank or your online shopping. And is there anything preventing hackers from compromising a PC through this satellite network? Well, yeah. The, I guess if you're really paranoid, you shouldn't have a sense. You should not have a sense of security. And this is where John, you and I are, are kind of on opposite ends of the scale. I personally don't think most people have to worry at all, even on a cable modem or a DSL modem or a dial-up. I think if you have Direct PC, you are so difficult to hack into that people are just not going to bother with you. You just don't show up to the programs that go out and probe systems. You just don't show up. So I think that. You are, it is the most secure way, short of, as I said, a fully encrypted connection all the time. Most people don't really need that kind of security. So I don't want to give you a false sense of security, but neither, John, do I want to have people shaking in their boots. You're, you know what? You're pretty much safe all the time, no matter what you do. Zonto, better known as Andrew, said, actually, this isn't one I wanted to read, but I'll read it anyway. I saw the MP3 to CD. I'm wondering if there, this was from yesterday's, if there's a way to put one song from one CD, then a different song from another CD, and so on, of course. But you'll have to copy them to the hard drive first and then take all those MP3s or waves and assemble them. By the way, we did this yesterday, and I showed you how to do it with uh, Spin Doctor and a program we downloaded from Hot Files. Meanwhile, last night, I downloaded the latest version of Music Match, which is the software I use. It will also allow you to burn a CD, and I think it's probably better than either of those two choices for taking MP3s and making CDs out of them. So I'd like to add that to the list. Tom had a great suggestion. Tom, thank you. He says, if you search on PriceWatch.com for a USB case and IDE, you'll find external cases for IDE drives, like we were talking about at the beginning of the show, that convert them to USB. Then you just connect it to the USB connection. Great tip, Tom. Thank you very much. Whoops, I'm going the wrong direction. Terry writes, I want to do, no, I'm into web page design. I want the best HTML-based web page builder. I've said it before, and I, I will say it again. Dreamweaver 3 from Macromedia, and you can try it for 30 days free, www.macromedia.com. He says, Ryan says, from Cedar Grove, West Virginia, I don't have a cable modem or DSL, but I am online on my modem 8 to 10 hours a day. Do you think I should have a firewall? Yeah, that's, you're sitting, you, anytime you're on the network, you're exposed. I want to reiterate it. Most people, you don't have to worry. Hackers are not trying to break into your system. A few simple precautions like turning off file sharing are enough. But if you're worried, use a firewall. I wouldn't spend money on it. I'd get Zone Lab Zone Alarm at zonealarm.com. It's free. It's non-intrusive. It's like wearing belt and suspenders. It gives you a little bit more sense of security. That's it for this show. By the way, we're going to talk to uh, Steve Gibson of Shields Up on Friday on Call for Help. I hope you'll join us for that. Coming up tomorrow, when you build your site, you know, you not, not only need to think about content design and structure, but you've got to think about accessibility. Silicon Alley's Web Workshop talks about making your website accessible to others. That's it for today. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.